so I am 37 weeks pregnant and according to what to expect my baby is between 19 and 22 inches long and weighs about six and a half pounds now I know I took a couple days off from YouTube I'm actually 37 weeks and five days so I'm actually almost 38 weeks but the reason why I took some time off was because my doctor's appointment couldn't get me in for my checkup until Wednesday when I was supposed to have it on Monday because I was going first I was going every other Monday then I was going every Monday so I should have had my 37 week appointment on Monday but they couldn't get me in until Wednesday so you know I thought this would be a pretty good time to take a couple days off from YouTube not have to worry about filming and editing and uploading and everything else that comes with YouTube so I did take a little bit of a break since I didn't have you know the information to give you in my update anyway so let's get started I am 37 weeks which is officially full term I've heard some people say that um, 36 or 37 weeks that window is kind of considered full term but more likely I've heard 37 so I'm going with 37 weeks being officially full term so hashtag grace and watch 2k 15 is officially started follow me on Instagram and you'll see you'll see all my pics okay so last week at my 36 week checkup I had the group B strap test done and they said that they would call me back within like a day or so and give me my results. Sorry, I have, my ass, that's not, my ass reflux has been kind of, kind of bothering me. So you might feel me kind of, or you might hear me kind of um, like in and out as I'm talking and kind of like. Okay, so I had the group B strap test done and I didn't hear anything back the next day or the day after that. So I just assumed you know, it must have come back negative and assumed that no news is good news, right? Well, what day would it have been? Probably like three or four days later, I was driving and I saw on my um, hands free calling screen, my doctor was calling me. And um, I figured it was the health reminder for my next appointment because usually they'll call me and say, um, like a recording will say, as a health reminder for Rachel, you have an appointment on Tuesday, July 22nd, blah, 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 at 1.15, blah, blah, blah. And there's, it's a recording, so there's no reason to answer it. So usually I just let me go to voicemail. And so I started thinking about it and I was like, wait, my appointment isn't until, um, at that point it was a couple days away, so they wouldn't be calling a couple days in advance. So I listened to the voicemail you know, kind of concerned, like, why would they be calling me? And it was my nurse, and she just said, Hi, Rachel, this is blank. I just wanted to talk to you about your test results, so call me back at extension blank, blank, blank. And so I'm like, well, why would she want, want to talk to me? Wouldn't she just, you know, say, you know, okay, your test results are positive. And so... I immediately start freaking out. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I have group B strep. I went straight to conclusions. I was like, that must be, you know, why she's calling. So I call back to my doctor and we're playing phone tag for like 10 minutes because you can never call my doctor's office and get straight to the nurse you want to talk to. You go through like five different receptionist's office and you can't just give them the one extension. They send you to like five different people and it's really a hassle. And so I call her back and she's, um, I didn't even get a hold of her because she must have been with a patient, but I got one of the other nurses that was working and she was like, oh, well, let me pull up your file. So she pulls up my file and she's like, oh, it looks like your test results came back negative. So I'm like, really? I was freaking out thinking that I tested positive and I had to um, go get my antibiotics or whatever. And it was negative the entire time. So I tested negative for group B strep. Also at my appointment, I 
was checked for the first time for dilation and I am dilated to a one so Grayson wash 2k15 I'm dilated to about a one and he said at this point basically I can go you know two days from now or two weeks from now you know being dilated to one isn't a big deal but on the positive side a lot can happen in a short amount of time you can you know the second your water breaks it can go pretty fast so that's a positive if you follow me on Instagram you probably saw a couple of my posts that I was posting about I am so active tonight I had kind of posted that um, I had been feeling like fluish symptoms and like really sick to my stomach and not very well. And this was a couple days leading up to my appointment and then the day of my appointment I felt terrible. Like I probably could have thrown up if I would have gone and tried to. I was kind of thinking like, you know, maybe is my, you know, immune system acting up because, you know, might be progressing I just it's not normal for me to feel you know sick like that I'm never like fluish sick so I kind of have it in my head that I'm like oh maybe I'm you know progressing a little bit you know getting excited and so I go to my appointment and I'm only a one so I was a little bit upset not gonna lie I came home and cried for a little bit and then I took a nap and then I felt fine but I am just ready to have him like I'm full term. He can come anytime now. Um, I know that they say going up until 40 is, you know, it's healthiest and that's what's the best, but honestly, he's running out of room. And I'm not being sarcastic when I say that because I know people say, running out of room, get it, haha, <laughs> whatever. No, he really is running out of room. And it's starting to become very painful. Anytime that he has the slightest movement, ugh, like, like some of his movements are, you know, it's just his entire body like flipping around. Well, even just the slightest movements are so painful, and that's why right now I'm just laying down as I talk because he's being really active right now because I just ate dinner and I probably shouldn't have filmed this right after I ate but he is running out of room and I know that for a fact because I'm not measuring you know my stomach isn't measuring any bigger and I haven't been putting on any more weight these last couple of weeks I don't think I've um, really talked about weight gain in my updates up until now just because um, in my first trimester, I gained very rapidly, and that's not something, you know, you want to spread out to, you know, everyone on the internet that's viewing you. But I actually um, expressed my concerns to my doctor, and uh, she reassured me that, you know, smaller built people are actually given a wider allowance of weight to gain while you're pregnant as opposed to someone that started out overweight just because your body needs to grow you don't have the room to grow so I'm five seven five eight I'm pretty tall I'm between five seven and five eight and I started out about 125 130 pounds and I'm now 168 and a lot of that weight was gained first in the beginning of my second trimester. And so I had expressed those concerns to my nurses and my doctor. And they basically told me that, you know, for being my height and my weight that I was, it's good that I was gaining so much weight because my body, my stomach, my torso area, didn't have the room to carry a baby. Whereas someone that's, you know, built a little bit bigger, they have more room. So they actually recommend women that are overweight to not gain as much weight. So that did make me feel a little bit better. It reassured me that my weight gain 
wasn't a big problem. But yeah, these last couple weeks I've noticed I'm not gaining any weight and I'm not growing, but he's growing so the more that he grows the more uncomfortable I'm getting. So yeah, I was very emotional when they told me I'm only at a one because I am ready for him to be out. I am so uncomfortable. I know I'm talking a lot. This is going to be one of my longer updates because I have so much to talk about. I have been having the sciatic nerve pains in kind of like the fronts of my thighs and um, like the inner thigh. And for me, what it feels like is it'll be like a sudden numbness but I'll kind of lose a little bit of feeling and then it's bam, then it hits you. My blood pressure was actually lower than what it has been so uh, my nurse expressed to me that that could have been um, what was making me you know feel really fluish and sick and not really feeling very well so basically she just recommended that I try to drink as much water as I can and um, be careful about my movement, you know, going from point A to point B, standing up, sitting down, not to stand up too fast. My boobs are sensitive, I'll put it out there. Um, Lauren accidentally elbowed me the one day and for probably two days after that, that exact spot hurt so bad and actually I... I was washing the dishes and I had like a little spot and I thought that the dishwater had splashed me and it was just a little bit, there's a little mark. And then it happened again and it was more and it was right, it was right, the spot was right at my nipple. And so I, I just kind of put two and two together and I said, well, that's definitely not the dishwasher splashing me right there in that amount, in that same spot. So I, yeah, I lactated a little bit. Constipation is back. I had, um, I had constipation a lot in my first trimester and um, it's starting to hit me again. I'm trying to speed up, he, this is what I was talking about earlier, his movements are just, they take my breath away, I'm not gonna lie. He, like, I know, I know, it's not contractions because it's, my stomach isn't tightening like a fist. It's not, it's not the contraction feeling at all. So, no guys, I'm not going into labor as I film this. I promise I'm not in labor. It's, I can feel it's him. Like, I can feel his little body, you know, kicking around and jabbing me. My back pain, my upper back uh, my back has hurt for the last couple months. I know I've told you guys that, but my back has been hurting really bad, and um, it's not unusual for me to have to sit down and ice my back with frozen peas like twice a day. My hips and my pelvis are very achy, and they hurt, and... You can just definitely tell that his head is aligned and he's ready to go and hopefully he comes soon because my pelvis and I can feel more of the weight on my cervix which he actually um, I forgot to mention earlier when I was talking about my appointment he said that my cervix is um, softening up so hopefully that means things are progressing Last of all is my bladder. Kind of correlating with what I said with him being aligned. He's down there, he's ready to go, so he's basically right on my bladder and I pee all the time. And I'll get that really uncomfortable feeling, like, you know when you've been holding your pee in and you have to go to the bathroom really bad? I feel that all the time, so I'll go to the bathroom and sometimes I can't even get anything to come out because I really didn't have to go. I just feel like I have to go, but then um, a majority of the time I really do. I get up to pee a lot. I probably pee anywhere from like two to four times during the night. Four is maybe a little bit. Okay guys, so that is everything. Um, 
I do want to mention I got him a new coming home outfit and I'll show you next week because I'll go into that next week because I don't feel like talking about it. It's kind of a long story. Long story short, he has a new coming home outfit. Um, I'll show you guys in my next update. everything I wanted to talk about. We, our last couple appointments have been with one doctor and we meet the other doctor that works in that same practice next week on Thursday. So expect my next update to be uploaded on Thursday or Friday of next week because I meet with the other doctor on Thursday. So that is everything. I'm going to go ahead and show you my 